Hello and welcome to Kids Kingdom Sunday School. I'm Eden. And I'm Sarah. Have you heard of the saying or the phrase, I'd have to see that to believe it? Some people just live their whole lives by that saying. They, they have to have proof of everything and when they can't see or feel something, they have a very hard time believing it's true. Yeah, I do know some people like that. Would you believe me, Eden, if I told you that I could make two paper clips hooked together without touching them? I don't know, maybe. I can. So I have two paper clips here, and they are attached to this dollar. I'm not touching the paper clips, I'm just touching the dollar. So if I do this right, these paper clips will fly in the air and then they'll hook together when it's time to pick them up. So let's give it a try. You ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Oh my gosh, it worked. Two paper clips. Let me check for real. Yep. Yep. There you go. That worked. So yeah. if I just said that though and didn't show you guys, you might be like, how is she going to do that? I don't know if I really believe that she could do that, but you just saw me do it. So now you know that I can definitely do that. Would you believe me if I told you I can make a penny disappear right before your eyes? You can. Check out this box. It's a really cool box. Now I'm going to put the penny in the box. I'm going to show you how I put the penny in the box just to make just to make sure it's you I'm not putting it behind the box, okay? Ready? See, I'm not putting it behind the box. You saw me put the penny in the box, right? But the penny isn't invisible, you know. I put it in the box. You watched it happen, yet it is an illusion. The penny is in the box. The box just looks different to you than what it actually is. What actually happened is there a mirror right here. And there's a message projecting. It's backwards, but it projects forward when there's a mirror. It says hello there. And then this little slit is behind the mirror and look the penny comes right out it's behind the mirror so you did make a penny disappear right before our eyes yeah you had to see it to believe it yeah it the box isn't actually what we thought it was it's not it's not a typical box and that's a lot like easter easter isn't exactly what the people expected when the women woke up and they went to the tomb they expected to find things one way they um the disciples they were going through their grieving process they expected things to be one way but that all changed on easter because when the women went to the tomb to check for jesus's body and to prepare it it wasn't there jesus was alive so jesus being alive changed everything. Most of the disciples were super excited about this news because their best friend was alive. Their their whole lives are going to be different. They weren't sure how this happened, but they believed it. Except for one. One had kind of a hard time believing it. His name was Thomas. And we're going to listen to Thomas's story um, Eden's going to read it to you from her Bible. She has um, the deep blue Bible that she got for her third grade Bible. So this is a gift from the church to um, our third graders. We all we give out Bibles when you're in third grade. So Eden, we're going to read a story from the book of John. It's John chapter 20, verses 24 through 31. Is John found in the New Testament or the Old Testament? The New Testament, because the New Testament has stories of Jesus. Yep, the New Testament are stories of when Jesus was here on earth. So, Eden, why don't you take it away and read us the story of Thomas. Thomas was the one called Didymus. One of the twelve wasn't with the disciples when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. But he replied, unless I, shall, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my finger in the wounds left by the nails, and put my hand in the side, I won't believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in the house. Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them. He said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into my side. No more disbelief. Believe. 
Thomas responded to Jesus, My Lord and my God. Jesus replied, Do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see and yet believe. Then Jesus did many other miraculous signs in his disciples' presence, signs that aren't recorded in this scroll. But these things are written so that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, God's Son, and that believing you will have life in his name. So we don't get to have Sunday school like we normally do. Sometimes in Sunday school what we would get to do are some activity sheets. And I emailed your parents some activity sheets that you can print out at home. If I don't have your email, that's okay. You can check out um, our Facebook page, Kids, Kids Kingdom at Plymouth First UMC. And the links to those handouts are on our Facebook page too. So you can print those out and learn a little bit more about Thomas at home through our worksheets. But Thomas was a lot like the people we talked about in the beginning of our time today, people who had to see something to believe it. He needed to see Jesus with his eyes to know that Jesus was really alive. Sometimes... This is all people think about when they think about Thomas. Oh, he's a big doubter. He didn't really believe that Jesus was alive. But we have to remember that this was one of um, Thomas's closest friends, and he probably was really sad and really confused about what he had just heard about happening. And so to hear that Jesus was alive, it was really hard for him to just wrap his mind around that and to believe that. And so... On hearing the information that he heard, he had a very human and a very normal reaction, which was, I've got to see this for myself. In the story, when we hear Jesus actually come into contact with Thomas, he had a very, very cool response to Thomas. He didn't get mad at Thomas and say, oh, you're a horrible guy. You doubted me. I didn't hear you read any of that. Did you read that? No. No. Instead, Jesus met Thomas right where he was at, and he said, I'm going to show you what you need to see so that you can believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that what you've heard is true, that I'm alive. And Jesus wasn't mad at Thomas. He just needed to to see things differently than the rest of the disciples. So Eden read um, from the common English Bible. And in that translation, it says that Jesus says to Thomas, happy are those who see me or who don't see me and still believe. So some translations of the Bible say, blessed are those who don't see me and believe because Jesus knew that he wasn't going to be on earth forever. He, He wasn't actually. In fact, if we read a little bit further in the Bible, we read about Jesus going back up to or ascending into heaven and he was really gone for for a while this time. The Bible says he's going to come back. We don't know when that is, but from that day until now, we nobody has seen Jesus with their eyes. So, when he's talking about blessed are the people or happy are the people who see me, who don't see me and yet believe in me. He's talking about people like you and me. He's kind of giving us a shout out from all those years ago, which I think is pretty cool because Jesus was thinking about people like us even way back then. Yeah. There's another verse later in the New Testament in the book of Hebrews that talks about faith without seeing it. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is the reality of what we hope for, the proof of what we don't see. This is our memory verse for the, for the week. H- Hebrews 11.1 1. Do you have Easter eggs left over from Easter, the Easter egg hunt last weekend? Use those to help you learn this week's verse. You're talking about the plastic ones. Yeah. Not, yeah. not the real ones. Just talking about the plastic ones. Have mom or dad help you if you can't write it yourself or you don't like writing. Write, write parts of the verse out on a piece of paper and then cut out the words individually or in phrases and put the ver- pieces in your eggs. Mix them up and then open the eggs and try to put the verse back together like a puzzle. I think that's a cool idea, a cool way to practice our memory verse. So we'll have to, I couldn't find any of our eggs that we used for our Easter egg hunt, um, but they're here somewhere. So we'll have to dig those back out and maybe yeah. we can play play that game with that. So... When we have faith in Jesus, we 
we believe that he is with us, that he is here, even though we can't see him physically. So when you guys, it's kind of a hard thing to wrap our minds around because it's a big, big, big idea for us. So I want you guys to think about it like this. When you go to bed tonight, when you go to your beds or when you were in bed last night, when you shut your eyes to go to sleep, did you worry or ever think that your bed might not be there because you couldn't see it? No. And you haven't thought that? Yeah, when you go to sleep, you know that your bed is going to be there whether you can see it or not. And it's the same with Jesus. He tells us through his word that he's going to be with us. Just because we can't see him doesn't mean he's not there. He is there. And when we believe that without seeing him, he says that we'll be blessed. Now, right now, we might not feel blessed. We can't go see our friends. We can't play with anyone. We can't go to school. Now, some of you might be really happy about not being able to go to school. You might be really happy about that. Others of you are disappointed. Um, We can't run to the store just to pick something up. We can't go to the movies. We can't do all kinds of things that we normally would have done before COVID-19 came along. We have to wear masks when we go out. It might not seem like we're very blessed right now. But the blessing that we're talking about isn't based on what we have or the things that are going on in our lives. The blessing is Jesus himself. Knowing Jesus is the blessing. So being friends with Jesus is the blessing. And when we know him and we grow in our relationship with him, the blessing is bigger and bigger and bigger and keeps growing. And that's why we do what we do here at Kids Kingdom. So you guys will be able to grow in your relationship with Jesus and know him more and have a strong faith. So when you get big, your faith will keep getting bigger and stronger too. I think that we can try to know Jesus more every day. Some things that you can do to do that, you can read your Bible, you can pray, you can talk to mom and dad about things that um, they have to do with Jesus and the Bible and church. You can have those conversations. And right now, I would love to pray for you guys that your faith would grow and get bigger and that you know Jesus more every day. So will you pray with me? Jesus, we love you. Help us to know you more each day. We want to have a big faith, and that is possible because of you. Help our faith to grow. Thank you for making it grow. We pray these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Don't forget to check out those activity sheets on Kids Kingdom Facebook page. Be sure to look up for updates and information there as well. This Wednesday at 11.30 a.m., we are going to have a Kids Kingdom Zoom meetup. Please be on the lookout for an email with the meeting ID and password. If you aren't getting our emails, email my mom at christianned at pfumc.org. That's all for today. Hopefully we will see you Wednesday, and if not, we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.